Welcome to our Sitam Woodley Devotions. My name is Karita Mbagara, the senior pastor at Sitam Woodley, but also the deputy bishop of Christ is the Answer Ministries. We are living in difficult times. And in times like this, one of the questions that we are likely to ask is why do we suffer? Why do the righteous suffer? Why do good people suffer? This is the question that we want to look at in our Sitam Woodley devotions this week. And I want to start by saying, we all belong to God. He is the one who created us. And because of that, we are completely tied to him. And we live for his pleasure. And there is nothing we can do that can completely delink us from God. Consequently, when our father Adam, from whom we are all coming from, sinned, we also sinned. And because of that sin, the punishment that was placed on Adam is passed down throughout generations to all of us. I find that Adam was told to leave the garden. In other words, he was thrown away from the presence of God. It's only in the presence of God that there is fullness of joy, that there is fullness of everything. There is perfection in every way. But when we are away from God, things are not like that. And consequently, we inherit, you know, the punishment that came to Adam. We also find that the ground was cast on behalf of Adam. In fact, he was told that he will eat out of the toil of his labor. He has to labor. And so the, the origin of suffering is because of the fall. It is because we fell short of the glory of God. When we fell short of the glory of God, we also exposed ourselves to the manipulation of the devil. And the devil seems to be in contention with God. He is always doing anything that is anti-God. He is given to opposing what God is doing and what God is up to. We see this in the life of Job, who was a righteous man who lived right. But the devil wanted to show that Job was, you know, following God because he was interested. He stood to gain something. In other words, he had a ulterior motive. But we know that at the end of the story, Job was proved right or God was proved right. But because the devil was fighting against what God was saying, Job suffered the consequence. It would seem that we too are in the same boat, that the devil fights us as a way of fighting against God. In the book of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10, Paul is speaking about uh, his ministry. And in verse 10 he says the reason he was given the opportunity to preach, it says his intent was that now through the church the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. What I read that to mean is that there is still a cosmic battle between God and the forces of evil. When he talks of rulers and authorities in the heavenly places, these are forces of darkness that are opposed to the agenda of God. And the church is used uh, by God to preach to this in, in action that God is still sovereign, that God is still the one in charge of the world. And because of that, we are also subject to the works of the devil. We are fought by forces of darkness, but we will overcome. And so there is suffering that comes because we are in God's agenda. There is suffering because the devil knows we belong to God. And more so, when we are believers, the devil will attack us. In this world where the devil is in charge, or has been allowed to be in charge, Jesus told us in John chapter 16, verse 33, that in this world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. 
In other words, as long as we are in this world where the devil is the one that is the prince and is ruling for a season, we will suffer. So there is suffering because of our sin. There is suffering because of where we are at in this world. But we also find that God uses hardship and suffering to discipline us when we are out of, you know, out of uh, course, when we are out of line. You know, so God allows hardship, but we are not to allow that to derail us. In the book of, uh, uh, I believe it is Hebrews chapter 12, we are told that Jesus did not, you know, set his eyes, having set his eyes on the cross, he did not look aside. And we are called to follow that example because of the joy that he knew that would come his way after he was victorious. We are also called to be victorious by focusing on what awaits us in the future and not to allow ourselves to get out of line of what God expects and wants of us. And God will discipline us to build us, to build our faith and to get us to the place he wants us. He also allows suffering so that he can test whether we truly are committed to him. Just like Job was tested, not because God was doubting, but because the devil was in doubt, it will also happen to us. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2, it says that the children of Israel were in the wilderness for 40 years because God wanted to test, it says, to humble them, but also it goes further to say because God wanted to test what really was in their hearts. So there is suffering that comes to test us whether we truly love God, whether we are truly committed to him. But there will be also suffering that cannot be explained on this side of, the, of earth. Under the sun, we may never explain it. I take cognizance of the fact that Job, for all the years he lived, or the months that he went through suffering, he did not know that there was a battle that was beyond him. It was not because of his sin. In fact, chapter 1 says that Job is a great man and God gives him a great commendation. Uh, even when he's speaking to the devil, he says, have you considered my righteous servant, you know, who, is, uh, who shuns evil and there is nothing that is wicked in him? And that was a CV given by God but he was still tested. But God has an agenda, or God had an agenda. And I want to say, there are times we will suffer. Perhaps a child is born with a, uh, with a condition that we can't explain. This child has not lived to have done anything that we would call sin. But God allows it. But we will understand it by and by. We may not understand it now. But what God calls us to do is to have faith, to trust in him, and to walk in him, and uh, just to know that he cares for us. I think the other thing is to say that our faith will be tested. Our faith in God will be tested. And just because we are believers in Jesus, we will suffer. Just like, you know, other believers who have gone before us, they have been opposed because of their faith in the Lord. So there is suffering that comes because we, we have put our trust in God. There is suffering that will come because uh, others have made decisions. Our leaders have made decisions that cause us also to suffer. For example, in the book of uh, Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It continues to say, because you have rejected knowledge, and this is the knowledge of God, then I will also reject you. So when we reject God, we suffer. But even beyond that, it says, because you have neglected my law, that's God speaking, then I will also neglect your children. So we see that the children are suffering because of their fathers. In other words, decisions that we make as fathers will affect our children or as parents 
will affect the generation that is coming. When the leaders are not walking right, when the priests are not walking right, they will affect the people that they have influenced or that are under them. So there is also that kind of suffering that comes our way. So I want to urge you, if you are suffering, remember that you are connected to God. And you can always go back to God. You may not always understand why you are suffering. Remember that God is waiting for you to fellowship with him. It is Warren Wiseby who says that heaven is full of joy and they are not tears. He also says that hell is full of tears and there is no joy. But in the world that we live in, both are to be found. There will be joys and there will be tears. And because we are in this earth, before we leave this earth, let's ensure that we hold on to the promise of God. I want to say, this earth presents both of them, and we need to be aware of that, because to be forewarned is to be forearmed. Let us be ready for whatever life may or providence may bring our way. Let us be ready to rejoice when joy comes and good things come our way, but let us also be ready to hold on to God when bad things come. Somebody has written that uh, you are, you are, your best life now. I want to say it is best life now for those who will end up in hell. But those who know the Lord, it is the worst life now. And the joy of heaven will compensate for all the troubles that we may have gone through in this world. May the Lord bless you as you meditate about those few ideas that I have shared. And may you be strengthened in your faith and in your resolve to follow God. Come rain, come shine. Thank you and God bless you.